Arsenal have made it six games unbeaten after a dramatic win at the Emirates Stadium. A 94th minute winner follow a pandemonium. Mikel Arteta's title charge is well and truly underway. So from the details behind our brand new right hand side, to Arsenal's left hand side solution, the important change regarding Declan Rice, and the breaking news regarding Ricardo Calafuri. As per, let's break it all down and discuss the five things we learned from Arsenal for Leicester 2. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bass 14 and welcome back to your boy's channel and I hope you guys are doing sensational. I personally am because of the result but not because of my eye, that's why I'm wearing the glasses. But anyways guys, smash a like on the video if you enjoy and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And starting off with Arsenal's new right hand side. After a testing week for Arsenal of games away from the Emirates Stadium, a return to home ground was definitely welcome and in terms of the lineup, there was some major news. Yuri and Timber was once again a right back in Califuria left back with the returning Leandro Trossard. The key thing that there was no Ben White in the squad whatsoever. As you can see here, he was joined by his wife and his mother at the Emirates in the Arsenal boxes. Unavailable due to an injury and not selection. But for Mikel Arteta, his depth is coming through this season. Up step Yuri and Timber once again with an outstanding right back performance. Dropping an 8.3 rating with 1 assist, 1 clearance, 4 tackles, 5 ground balls won, a whopping 63 passes completed and 7 key passes. Creating a whopping 7 chances for fullback. He joins Trent Alexander-Arnold as the defender that's created the most chances in the league game since 16-17. After a fantastic performance against Man City away where it was more about defensive work, this game was a reminder of Timber's forward going quality, composure in the final third and game intelligence, knowing exactly where the time is overlapped and help of Bukayo Saka. It's a game that I truly realised how much of a threat he is to Ben White. A player that has been a mainstay for Mikel Arteta ever since signing in 2021. Despite having the likes of Takahiro Tomiyasu, so he's never been a key competitor. But you look at Timber's fundamentals, the fact that he's even better defensively, arguably more composed on the ball and even more versatile. There's a lot of things going in Yuri and Timber's favour. You then look at the history of Mikel Arteta and how ruthless he's been with his first team starters. Key players like Kieran Tierney and Ramsdor and most Smith are dispensed. I don't think that will be the case with Ben White though. Still a top player with a fantastic connection with Bukayo Saka, with a major strength of consistent availability. Timber's just come back from an ACL so Mikel Arteta will need to be careful. Once Ben Wright returns, things are definitely going to get interesting. But as great as Timber was in this game, we have to talk about the player that was that much better. The star boy Bukayo Saka dropping a 9.4 rating. With 102 touches, 50 accurate passes, 8 key passes, 4 big chances created, 8 dribbles completed and 12 ground duels won. This was a monster class of a performance. With Saka becoming the first player to create 8 plus chances and complete 8 plus take-ons in a single Premier League game this decade. In a league that we've seen Eden Hazard, Mo Salah and so many top wingers, Bukayo Saka is reaching a new level of creative excellence. Having now created a whopping 9 big chances this season, the most out of any player in Europe's top 5 leagues this season ahead of Yamal and Rafinha. Having got 5 assists in 6 games and it could have been 6-6, six and six, it was his corner that led to the winner for Leandro Trossard. Yes, it was an on goal, so it won't be an assist. But you look at the fact that Arsenal have only had 37 corners this season, the third most in the league, 16 less corners than Spurs, yet so much more effective. It all falls down to Bukayo Saka's elite delivery from that right hand side, consistently putting it on a six points to cause chaos. And the box is so congested with so many things happening, Saka's final ball is reaching elite levels, producing one of the most complete wide forward performances that we've seen in the Emirates in a very long time. There's a very natural connection alongside Yuri and Timber. He's still able to thrive without Martin Odegaard. His influence is definitely growing. Moving on to the second thing, Arsenal's left hand side solution. In a video where we talked quite a lot about the right hand side and how important it's been, it seems that like the left hand side is finally getting closer. With the arrival of Ricardo Calafuri alongside Declan Rice getting a more adapted role, the Arsenal attack finally has a sense of balance. Starred by Gabriel Martinelli with an 8.4 rating, one goal and one assist, his first goal as much, with two key passes and one big chance created, it will be very easy for me to sit here and say that he's back. But he's been just as threatening all season. Constantly causing issues on the left hand side, starting against the likes of Man City. The threat itself has always been there, and now we're getting the end product. Martinelli is a player who's known for his instinctive finishing ability. Go back to his first games under Unai Emery, playing as a centre forward. The standout game was against Standard Liège, a 4 0 victory, where Martinelli scored two goals and got an assist. It's no surprise that we saw a much calmer Martinelli after scoring that goal, no longer snatching a chance as being far more decisive. But the main reason why he's able to thrive is the fact that he finally has a partner. Mikel Arteta's new left hand side solution of Ricardo Calafuri. Having now played two games with Martinelli, he's helped the winger get one goal and two assists, with a very impressive 7 point rating himself. One clearance, one block shot, and three tackles. Six ground duels, one and seven out of eight in the air. 
with two key passes and two successful dribbles. As aggressive as they come, almost like a Sergio Ramos. So comfortable in the final third and always able to give a size tempo. The type of player that if he was playing for a lower nation, he could easily play as a number 10. What I love the most about this game is how composed he is under pressure. Not scared to impose himself on the ball and try to make combinations. Find him out on the lead as soon as possible. The only thing that he needs to work on is his distances. With the main example being the James Justin goal. While it's a fantastic finish, there was too much space given. But can we talk about his celebrations for a second? The fact that he's so eager and so excited every time Arsenal score. Look at the way that he ran over the Gabriel Martinelli after the second Arsenal goal. Seen at the heart of every single Arsenal celebration. It's almost like he's been an Arsenal player for a very long time. But we do have a bit of a concerning report. According to Team News and Ticks, there are unconfirmed reports that Ricardo Calafri suffered a knee injury at the end of the Leicester game, where the defender was apparently in tears. The Italian went down during the celebrations of the Leandro Trossard winner. Now, in terms of the celebration itself, it was clearly cramped. The real concern was this a few minutes later. Jumping for the ball landed awkwardly, holding his knee straight away. It's unfortunately an area that Calafri has history, having suffered a major knee issue when he was only 16, costing him over a year of his career. Here he was after the game giving his autograph though, you can clearly see that his knee strapped by the fact that his walking is positive. No crutches and no more reports so far. Instead of fear-mongering and trying to make stuff up, let's hope for the best instead. Moving on to the third thing, Arteta's coaching masterclass. In a season where Arsenal have often been labelled as defensive, boring boring Arsenal only able to park the bus. Well in this game, that same boring Arsenal had a whopping 75 touches in the opposition box, becoming the first team to do so in multiple games since the start of last season. The game might have been close, but the XG definitely wasn't. Arsenal were whopping 4.37 to Leicester 0.27. We're talking 74% possession, 66 final third entries, and a 6.6 expected threat created, with Leicester held to a minus 0.1. This is a game that Arsenal had a whopping 93% field tilt. We might have the most attacking low block that I've ever seen. In a game that definitely became dramatic after Leicester scored their two goals, the performance itself was a lot more emphatic than the results suggest. A 6 0 type of game where Arsenal were constantly battering the Leicester door. It was the most shots taken by a team in one match across Europe's top five leagues this season, becoming the first hour with 15 or more shots on target in a Premier League match since December 2017. The first team with 10 big chances created since September 2019. We're often making teams that criticise for not being creative enough. This year, we are seeing a new evolution in terms of fluidity. With the likes of Timber and Calafiri being so comfortable in different zones, other Arsenal players fully adapt to the Mikata as style of play. You end up with stuff like this where you've got Gabriel Magalhaes almost playing as a left number 8, trying to bamboozle the opposition and be so unpredictable. In the final third, you can see Trossard and Martinelli constantly rotating, playing a major part in the second Arsenal goal. In the matter of just one game, Arsenal were able to climb the third most XG in the league now, the most big chances created, and the third highest touches in the opposition box. A key reason behind the dominance was also left number 8 in Declan Rice, playing in a far more box to box role and definitely more involved, dropping an 8.0 rating with 75 passes completed and 2 key passes, 2 out of 2 ground doors won. This was Mikel Artea playing to Declan Rice's strengths, not asking him to play in the final third and crash the box, allowing him to drop deeper and dictate play instead. With the return of Mikel Marino not far away, I am very intrigued to see how Mikel Artea evolves it next. But in a game where Leicester's right back was able to score 2 goals, all for an XG of only 0.09. There was definitely a bit of luck involved, but also at the same time a bit of sloppiness. We're looking at Thomas Partey who gave the ball away for the first Leicester free kick. Even though he dropped a very solid performance on the ball, a 7.4 rating and 87 passes completed. My major concern is when you have Partey as a 6, it seems like Arsenal have a lot more gaps open up. Teams are able to transition better and cause a lot more issues. With Thomas Partey into the final year of his Arsenal contract, available on a free at the end of it. According to Ryan Taylor, Arsenal are skeptical in handing Partey a new deal. Talk to me down below in the comments that once we have Mikel Marino fully fit, what are we going to do with Declan Rice and Thomas Partey? Who should be our starting number 6? Moving on to the fourth thing, Odegaard's replacement. In a game where Arsenal let go of a 2 goal lead and did a 94th minute winner, they were up against a keeper on steroids. Mad Thomas are making a whopping 13 saves with a 9.7 rating, preventing an XG of 1.74. That's the most saves of any keeper in the Premier League since David De Gea against Arsenal in December 2017. Arsenal were definitely getting frustrated and that's when Mikel Arteta had to turn to his bench. A need for tempo and a need for acceleration. Enter the field the boy wonder Ethan Wanieri. 17 years of age and making things happen straight away. Dropping a 7.0 rating with 6 out of 6 passes and 1 key pass. Alongside one successful dribble. As Mikel says Ethan came on and beat 1, 2, 3 players straight away. I just love it. If you want to play here you need to play with that courage. After a solid preseason and a fantastic performance against Bolton. This was the game when Wanieri announced himself as a first team player. Coming on to a game where Arsenal had to win, making an impact straight away and giving Arsenal momentum is a type of talent that I have not seen since the likes of Jack Wilshere and Cesc Fabregas. When you've got the Arsenal number 10 available, if things are to go to plan, this could be the man. A super talent that seems years ahead of his age. 
With a massive game against PSG around the corner and Martin Odegaard still not being available, if Mikel Arteta wasn't scared to throw him off the bench in a must-win game, I wonder if he's going to get a start. In terms of the match winner though and the player of the match, it of course was Leandro Trossard, scoring a second Arsenal goal and playing a major part in the winner, producing a 7.5 rating with two successful dribbles and three key passes. His heat map shows a player that was playing all across the front three, favouring the right-hand side but not scared to drift to the left. This is the current Martin Odegaard replacement, a tried and trusted experienced player, arguably the best finisher at the football club. The jubilation after the on goal was there to be seen, followed by a fantastic celebration alongside Bukayo Saka. Come the 98th minute, we were able to make it four as Cobra Kai poked in a jammy little goal, showing once again his ability to find himself in the right place at the right time, alongside a certain Raheem Sterling who also has a similar ability. Despite scoring, it was a game that he missed two big chances, struggling at times to find an impact in the game, despite not making it three goals and three games at the Emirates Stadium. In the absence of Martin Odegaard, you look at Havertz's heat map, and you can see that he's playing a lot on the right-hand side as well. For a player that we've seen become a natural goal scorer in the past six months, we're not playing to his strengths right now as Mikel Arteta still finds a way to adapt without his captain. Moving on to the fifth thing, the sign of champions. Whenever you score a goal in the 94th minute, you think straight away, is this going to be our year? But in a fan base that witnessed so many similar moments in the past few years, something feels different about this Arsenal side. Coping better with injuries and going to tough away grounds. Not scared to adapt their play and get their results. Seconds away from three points at the Etihad, despite playing with 10 men for 45 minutes. Arsenal alongside City are now the only remaining unbeaten sides in the league. The robots were malfunctioning once again, drawing 1-1 at St James's Park, dropping points in back-to-back -back games for the first time in 2024, even losing the game on XG, as Newcastle produced a 1.69. With no Kevin De Bruyne and no Rodri, City were definitely struggling and they are now winners in the last five games without their two key starters. With Pep confirming that Rodri's injury is indeed very serious, an unknown timeline over the return of Kevin De Bruyne, we've seen how emotional City have been all week. How Pep Guardiola has been trying his best to apply the pressure towards Mikel Arteta. But as an Arsenal fan, for me, it's actually very exciting. Seeing a different side of the robots, less cold blooded and more emotional, Arsenal have not gone level on points with City despite having a far harder start. But the team top of the league is Arne Schlotz Liverpool after another 2 1 victory against Wolves. Liverpool lead the race now with 15 points, a point ahead of City and Arsenal. But when you compare our fixtures to both of those sides, Arsenal have definitely had it a lot harder. Three of the most difficult away games over and done with. It was very ironic after that week of being criticised playing with 10 men. The likes of Roy Keane calling Arsenal up to fancy their very own side play against Spurs and get battered at home with 10 men. As Spurs created a 5.33 XG, having not lost a single game against the Big Six since the start of last season. I'm not trying to hear talk on clubs that are fighting the bottom off. Instead, we focus on a massive game at the Emirates Stadium against League Earth champions Paris Saint-Germain. With some major breaking team news before the game. While Captain Martin Odegaard and Alexander Zinchenko are still missing, Mikel Arteta has welcomed back a certain Takahiro Tomiyasu. Having missed all of Arsenal's preseason, he is now back in full Arsenal training. And one player he won't have to face is Usman Dembele. A star for PSG in recent years but left out of the squad for this game, despite there being no talk of any injury. But the real thing that Arsenal fans are focused on is Mikel Marino. With Mikel Arteta confirming before the Leicester game that he was back in partial training. The great news before this game was the fact that he's back in full training. Linking up straight away with his left hand side partner, Lacrano Calafuri, who is also thankfully fit and available, flying straight into challenges with Gabriel Jesus. As Mikel Arteta says, Marino will bring us an unbelievable football brain. He's smart, he has quality, and he knows how to occupy the space. We are trying to keep him in the cage because he's been pushing everybody all the physios, doctors, everybody. A start may come too soon, but he will definitely be available with the squad. The question is, how brave is Mikel Arteta going to be? And will we see a certain number 53? That is the video there and there. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like on the video. And also, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow a boy on all of the social medias, then the links are down in the description. But that was the five things we learned from Arsenal 4, Leicester 2. Another three points in the bag in dramatic fashion. Into a long season where only six games in. So my friends, as exciting as it may be, let's stay on I'll see you soon. Take care. And have a